Hello everybody. Welcome back to Woogie's Corner. And uh, the last episode I promised you all that we're going to do something different maybe this time. And well, to keep that promise, we are going to do something different. We're going to pull a story out of my book here. I was leafing through this the other day and, and I've been fortunate enough in my life to have done a lot of different things. Anyway, there's a story in here. And uh, it concerns uh, my brand new girlfriend that was like, what, 53 years? Anyway, yeah, 53 years ago. I'll tell you what, let's just jump in. Set the scene. We're going to set the scene, okay? Here's the scene. We're at Germerson Landing. Now, as some of you might know where that is. It's um, north of Fort St. James, which is about 100 miles northeast northwest of Prince George, 140 miles north of Fort St. James. It's in the middle of nowhere, folks, I'm telling you. One twisty, windy old bush road to get there. My dad bought a gold mining property there, a big placer mine in 1959. And uh, so in between playing gigs with musicians and doing stuff, I was always coming back, and I was uh, I was getting to be a pretty good mechanic. And anyway, set the scene here. We're about uh, 10, uh, summer of 69, that's right, about uh, 30 miles south of the Germison camp at what we call Rosemont. And uh, we're rebuilding a bridge for the Department of Mines. And we got some of the uh, um, Vanderhoof based uh, Department of Highways bridge crew there. We had a loader on the job and a small cat and a few other things. So, anyway, um, we had a fellow working for us. His name was Stan Buchanan, running loader for us. Okay. So, I'd come down there every once in a while and service the loader and do what I could. He announced one day, and oh, this must have been in July. And he needed a few days off because he needed to go down to the uh, U, uh, U.S. border <laughs> and he was going to meet his family there and he was going to bring them back uh, up to Germison. Okay, so we gave him a few days off and I had heard some rumor about he had uh, a wife and um, two young stepdaughters. And um, so that the day came, folks, when um, Stan arrived back, and, and uh, I heard that the one stepdaughter was quite good looking. Late teens, I thought, hmm. Well, being the man about the bush that I was, I'll be the judge of how good looking she is, because I got ladies all over the place, right? Yeah. So anyway, I met her, yeah, I thought she was quiet, good looking enough, quiet, and kind of a city girl, I thought, yeah. All right, I'm just going to fast forward down to the story I want to get to. So we finished the job down there, and uh, we had to move to camp. We had to move back up to, to uh, the Germerson camp or at Rosemont. So we had drivers for everything. We hooked onto trailers and we did everything. But we had a greater sitting down there. Um, for some of you equipment operator types, this was an Adam 610. It was a fairly big greater. It would be about the size of a, a little bigger than a Cat 12, a little smaller than a Cat 14. It was 20 some ton, I guess, and it had blown an engine. It was dead in the water. But we needed to get it out of there. We couldn't leave it there. So we cooked up this we cooked up this big plan where we were gonna make a toolbar, which we did. And uh, we had a Ford F8, 1951 51 Ford F8, about a five-ton truck. It had a big flat deck on the back of it. And we had a TD6 International Cat, which weighed about six tons. And so we, you know, put the cat in the back of the truck. And then we hooked the truck to the tool bar, and we hooked the tool bar to the grader, and then we bought 
Well, this was great, except we had a problem. We didn't have anybody to drive the rail. I mean, we wanted to do all this in one big move then. <laughs> so, I talked my, by this time she was sort of almost becoming my girlfriend, okay. Anyway, I talked her into getting in that, in this grader and driving this thing. Now, all she had to do was just stand there in a big steering wheel. But this thing's uh, oh, 25 feet long or so, 20 ton. No engine, dead in the water, no brakes, no no power steering. You could steer it, but but we had the tow bar hooked to it. We had the truck. So the idea was that Stan would come along behind with the loader. And any steep pitches we had, he would get behind and show. Okay, so it was a beautiful day and off we go up the road. It was fairly good going for about the first 15 miles or so. <laughs> Nothing too serious. Till we get to a place called Boulder, Boulder Hill, that's right. Now this Boulder Hill was a mean, nasty bit sidling, blasted out of pure bedrock about 15 degrees up and around the corner and and there was a Manson Lake was right down below it. Nasty piece of work. So that was our first test, and then we got the loader up behind the grader, and she's in there, and you know, and we're up the hill we went first gear, boy, you know, just, mm. and we get up there. Well, okay, that was fine. Away we go again. About another 10 miles, we come to another big hill. This one's called the Wolverine Hill. This one is not twisty and windy, but it's a good 15, 16% zip straight up. In. And so this is there again. Stan gets behind with the loader and starts shoving and up to we go. Now, here we're, folks, I don't want to bore anybody with this, but we're getting to the crux of this story here, trust me. We get up on top of this hill. Now we're in a kind of a side hill about three miles from Madison Village. And uh, it's kind of side hill there, and it's it's ravines in this side hill. And so the road was kind of doing one of these around these ravines. Not too steep like this, but more more twisty. And I just noticed that as we're going along, the wheels on that grader, because as you know about graders, the front wheels tilt. They do this, okay. Well, bouncing down the road, the, the wheels had started to tilt to the to the left, okay, a little bit. So if you're sitting in the machine, to the left, which meant when we went around a left-hand corner, well, no problem, almost like power steering. But going around a right-hand corner, <laughs> that's a different story. You fight it. Well, I noticed that she was fighting it on one corner there, and I thought, oh boy, we're gonna have to stop. We're only about a two mile by now, by now from Manson Village. We'll stop at Manson Village and we'll have to put this thing in gear and we'll have to get somebody to hold the lever and, you know, get these wheels straightened up. <laughs> so we went now around another uh, left-hand corner, and that was all right, followed by a fairly sharp right hand. And so I slowed down with the truck and we start around this right-hand corner, folks. And I could see right off the bat, she's losing it. She's back there. She's got both hands on that steering wheel. She's 17 years old. She's never done anything like this. She's from San Francisco, for crying out loud. She's a California surfer kind of girl. <laughs> you got to be, she's got, to, she's pulling on this wheel. You wouldn't believe. And now, I tell you, you don't know what kind of thoughts were going through my head as the left front wheel of that grader dropped over the edge of the bank, steep, about 45 degrees, about like that. And that thing was going over the bank. And so I instinctively did the only thing I thought I could do. I dropped that thing down in about three gears or so, and I hit the throttle, cut it to the right, and I thought, well, with a, I'll just yard those front wheels right back up on the road, and all will be good. Well, that was a great plan for about a half a second, 
until the friggin' toolbar flipped off the grater. <laughs> it just, because they were bald, we had a, a two and a five sixteenth ball on either end, and it, it, you know, the angle was too great or something, and she flipped off there. The last thing I remember, look at the mirror, and here's our grater and my new girlfriend are going over the bank. And I thought, oh my, and you know, you get those uh, images in your head of apolytic things like volcanoes and buildings of fire and things crashing down and car crashes and just horrible stuff and bodies flying around. And that's just, it just was all going through my mind just like a, a kaleidoscope at that particular point. I just had visions of that grater crashing down through the timber. There was a lot of popular birch, not very big stuff, nothing, nothing, nothing that would hold that thing. Crashing down through that timber and then probably starting to roll over and uh, anyway, this is all going through my mind. Oh my God, what anyway. Well, I'm sitting there. I, I hit the brakes. I stopped. Tow bar flipped off. There's nothing I could do. And I'm sitting there like this and I'm looking at the mirror view mirror watching this unfold back there. <laughs> She's back there pulling. Well, the front left front wheel goes over. And then the right front wheel starts, and this thing, she's, she's leaning about like that. She's, she's going over. That last possible second, thank God, the blade was not as high as it could have been. All right. The blade was only off the ground about that far. So the blade was the first thing to hit the windrow on the edge of the road. Then the upside tandem, the two drive wheels on the upside, there was a there's a case there, a tandem drive, and it hooked into the bank. <laughs> she comes to a stop. And this thing's leaning like that. Front wheels are over the bank. Rear half the downside rear wheels are over, half over. She comes to a stop. The last thing I remember was Diana. You know, you gotta remember the cab's like this, you know, and the door's open, and she jumps up into the side of the cab doorway, jumps onto the ground, and goes over to the side of the bank, sits on a rock, and starts to cry. <laughs> wow. Meanwhile, I jumped out of the truck, and I was thinking to myself, oh my God, what have I done? I was so mad at myself. I was just fit to be dying. I should never have asked her to do it. She's not used to this. This was a stupid idea. She should never have done this. And I was half mad at her stepdad for letting her do it. And oh, and all these emotions. And she's sitting over there and she's not very happy. And, but anyway, I went over and made sure she was okay. And she said she was. So Stan comes along with the loader. We get some chains on and we do our guy thing here, boys. And we get that crater back up on the road. We get haul that thing right back up on the road with the loader. So now we got it hooked up again to the tow bar. Uh, we straightened the wheels up. And so Stan comes along and said, well, he said, I'll hop in it and, and uh, we'll just leave the loader here. He said, I'll hop in it and we'll take it into Manson, which is only about a mile and a half away or something like that. So Deanna gets up off the rock she was sitting on. You're going to love this, folks. She walks over and says, uh, I drove it this far. I'll drive it the rest of the way. Well, Stan looked at me and I looked at him and, and we, holy smokes. I mean, who would say that? You know, I know a lot of guys that have that happened to them. They would have said, oh, yeah, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just sit in the pickup, you know. No, she says, I'll drive it the rest of the way. So she did. So she drove it the rest of the way to Manson Village, and uh, we parked it there. And then uh, we came back a few days later with somebody else, and we managed to get the thing up to our camp at uh, Jervison. So that pretty well completes the story, but I'll tell you, about that time, I decided, I think this girl's a keeper. I think I better... Not only is she good looking, but she can drive a greater. Hell, give me a 20 years old. <laughs>
and fool yourself. Well, I mean, they look pretty good. Anyway, we've been together now 53 years, and uh, she just told me the other day, she said, don't ever ask me to do anything like that again. And after all these times, she still won't run a power saw. Can you imagine that? But anyway. So, folks, uh, that story, and along with a whole bunch of ones, are in the book, Rattlesnakes, Airplanes, and Gold, available for now at Amazon.com. Gonna say goodbye for now. And uh, listen, we're getting ready to take a trip to the States. We're going down uh, actually just here in the next few days. We're gonna drive to Reno, Nevada, jump on and uh, visit some family there. Then we're gonna jump on a plane and fly to Houston, Texas for some more family. Then fly from Houston, Texas to Florida for more family and then back to Reno and then drive back up here. So I won't get back to home till probably third week of May. So you may not see any more videos coming for a while, but here's the good news. I'm hoping to take a whole bunch of really cool footage because we're going to see a lot of things on this trip, I'll tell you what. So I'm going to try to take a whole bunch of uh, probably phone footage or something. And when I get back here, I'll go through it and see if I can put together the odd Wookiee's Corner with some of that stuff on the trip. So anyway, thank you all for uh, listening one more time. and. I hope you enjoyed that story. I've always been wanting to tell that story to a lot of people. I've mentioned it to a few, few people over the years. Oh, musical ditty, yes. Here's a song that kind of uh, summarizes it for, for me, anyway. for watching this episode of Woody's Corner and we'll see you next time.